about. It's a whole process of discovering what our role is, what we were put here for, what we're good at, how we can give back. That's the challenge, that's the excitement, and it's going to change. It's going to change through the years. It's not going to stay static. You're not 22 and decide, hey, I'm going to do this, and you're that for 50 years. That doesn't happen that way. So, but there, there is a plan. And I, I, I think the, the thing we need to remember is not the kind of plan that is just laid out to you on a silver platter or a star falls from heaven one night and says, you are going to be an associate administrative assistant. <laughs> 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 And I believe in prayer. I believe in prayer. But I think our biggest responsibility is to work very, very hard at every opportunity we have. And gradually doors are open. And you start, you, you're going to suffer some hardships. You're going to have some successes. But you're going to start finding out who you are and what your, your, your place in this work is. And it's exciting. Sometimes it's frustrating. But it's something that we all need to grab hold of. And I, and I believe that with prayer, the, the responsibility is that we have an, uh, an action plan. You know, I've run into a lot of student athletes that are in a part of their life where they're kind of struggling and they'll say, you know, if I, if I should keep playing, you know, it'll, it, it, it'll you know, it'll just be God's will. We'll just, I'm praying about it. And I thought, no, you need to tell the gym and practice a little bit. <laughs> Plan. How many of you remember the movie Forrest Gump? Remember the <laughs> what, was, what did Forrest say about chocolates? Life is like chocolate. Never know. Very good. You are a <laughs> Actually, in my office, a little joke for y'all. In my <laughs> office, I'm called <laughs> Demon of <laughs> inside unless you cheat and have stuck your finger <laughs> but, but what you do is you when you take that chocolate you need to eat the whole thing oh, yeah. just have them <laughs> and i think that's a lot like life we don't know what our next opportunities are going to be but our responsibility is to take hold of that opportunity and utilize it to the utmost okay. um, we all want to know that we matter. We all want to be on a team. Think about it. Think about where we live. I don't want to be chosen last. <laughs> I don't want to be on Susie's team. <laughs> and I want to play more than anybody else. And we all want to be on a team and we want to grow. We, we, we want to have a significant part of that team. This morning we had a meeting. We have a group called First Life that meets every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m over at the rec center. And uh, Carrie Kennedy, our vice president for business, gave the, the we kind of did a little box of the day to each other. And this was about fear. And, and one of the things he's, he said, which I think summarizes this, is, do I matter? I mean, if there's anything that explains the essence of our life on this earth, is we all want that. Uh, so real quickly, I, I want to give you some, some things, and these are really simple, and you're probably saying, oh my God, I've heard this 200 times. But when I look back on teams that have been successful, and when I think back on the times when I best have my act together, there, there's four things that I think really help you to matter. And number one is to have a purpose of plan, to make a promise both as in your personal lives as well as what you're doing in the workplace. Have a plan. Write it down. And we call these goals. And I hate, Lisa Blazer comes around and does all this goal stuff and assessment, and I just want to lock her out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> and we stay out of trouble. And the, the goals, you need to have daily goals, monthly goals, five-year goals, but the most important ones are what you set every day because that kind of keeps you going. Uh, they need to be your own. 
to a certain extent, you're saying, well, but in the workplace, my boss tells me what to do. And you're right. But if your boss is a good boss, they're going to include you in the goal making. So you feel included. And you're right. Sometimes there are team goals that are set that maybe aren't right in line with what you would have chosen. But at a certain point in time, after discussion in the room, and we leave the room, we're together as a team. They need to be very high. Don't let anyone ever tell you you can't do something. Now, that does not mean that when you go back to the office tomorrow and somebody asks you to do something, you say, Lynn said I didn't have time. <laughs> but in setting expectations and reaching for dreams, I think the best thing my parents ever did is say, it was like, go for it. I believe we got to pray for big things, and then I think we got to pray to help us handle the big things. So the second thing really high. The second thing is to be very prepared. And that's what you're doing here. That's what you've done here. And it's called dedication, it's called commitment, um, work ethic. You know, in my whole career, people ask me, well, how do, you know, I have kids all the time come to me, well, I want to be an athletic director, so how'd you do it? I don't want to. I had to. I am often the only female in the room in the business I'm in. And I'm not a confrontational person. So Anna and I have talked about this. My way to respond is to just outwork everybody and to make sure it's their ideas and then we get it done and they're happy, I'm happy, I probably don't get the raise, but that, we're getting it done. We're getting it done. Um, and and if, you, if you can remember anything, this is a little bit macho, but this is a motto that I always give my teens. My expectations of your work ethic is this. I want you to run as hard and as far as you can. Okay? And then I want you to walk as hard and as far as you can walk. And I want you to crawl as hard and as far as you can crawl. And then I expect you to get run. And if any of you, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room that have children that have families. If you had to raise your child that way, with that kind of work ethic, shame on you. So, preparation, dedication. The, the third thing is it's your attitude, not your aptitude. You have to really believe and you have to have faith in yourself and your teammates. And faith is what we call trust trust and respect. Uh, you got to have confidence. You gotta have confidence in yourself. And I, and I worked, uh, my daughter is has just finished playing four years of basketball and there was probably more trauma sometimes than happiness. Um, you know, it was really tough. Your mom was a former coach at Texas A&M. Anytime I walked into the gym, it's like, oh, so aren't you a superstar? No, she was And I said, you gotta play with more confidence. Just go out there and how do I have confidence, mom? Well, the most, probably the most way, the important way to get confidence is doing what you do. Be extremely well prepared. So when you get in the middle of the battle, you know what to do. But, but you, it's your, it's your, it's your. There's a difference between believing and believing, and you have to have passion for what you do. And if you don't have passion for what you do, then you need to keep working to find what gives you passion and change jobs. And you say, well, that's easier said than now in the economy. I, I understand that. So the best time to be looking for a new job is when you have a job. But you need to have passion. You need to really believe. There's a story of a tightrope walker and all a guy who pulled a, a rope.